you know, the harsh reality of teachers here in Jamaica is that, you know, our Jamaican leaders, they always wait until you reach a sour point, right, for them to intervene and start to recognize that they need to do something better. Now, you know, as a young teacher, I realized the pattern that teachers are no longer playing stupid anymore. Teachers are no longer playing as if, oh, it is, it is the love and the passion going to supermarkets and paying the bills. Teachers are no longer living in that state of mind anymore. Teachers are now looking at the reality. And that is the fact that, you know, your your income should be able to can adequately provide for you and your family, right? And being able to can save something and invest something. And they're realizing that in their country, they're not appreciated. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another session of Rumination with Andrew. Thank you so much for joining as we are about to discuss a very important matter. And you've just seen that video of that young teacher who is suggesting that the educational system is in a crisis. And thus, she's agreeing, and I do agree, with Damon Crawford that there is a crisis that is out of proportion within the Jamaican education system. And it is one that the Prime Minister and the Minister of Education, Fable Williams, are actually denying, right? They are suggesting that things seem to be okay and that there is, in fact, a slow in the teacher migration rate. They are not seeing a high, they are not seeing high levels of migration, of immigration to foreign countries you know, um, from our J Jamaican teachers, but the reality suggests otherwise, right? And if you look at the Gleaner this morning, the Gleaner carried a story this morning, let me see if I can pull it up. Seems like I might not be able to pull up the story. Yeah, I'm able to do so. Um, yes, it's vacancy to, vacancies to fill. And this is coming from principals anxious to complete replacement of teachers a week before school, all right? So we always have a rush in terms of dealing with the problems. It happens yearly, and it seems like we always wait until the last minute before we deal with, the, with our problems. And you really wonder if these things are distractions or if they are deliberate, if they're intentional. But let's, we not, let's not begin to, you know, to surmise or to make any projections that we're not aware of. Now, this is Alfred Thomas, and he's principal of the Brownstone High School. And he is suggesting that he has lost a number of teachers, right? He has lost a number of teachers, and it's very difficult for him to reclaim those teachers, right? So here we have Alfred Thomas, and he's the principal of Brownstone High School. Now, Alfred Thomas, principal of Brownstone High School in St. Anne, has less than a week to fill nine vacancies on his teaching staff after facing the bulk of teacher resignations in late August. I did say early on that the that many teachers would be leaving at the last minute. They would not be informing their principals as principals are known, I understand, to snitch on them and sometimes consequences follow. Maybe they won't be able to get their last paycheck. So many of them, they wait on until the last minute so that they can get their final checks before departing. He says, however, he's not very optimistic that he will be able to complete this task in time for the reopening of school on September 2nd and is anxious about the impact it will have on the teaching and learning process. I am especially worried for the sciences. We have lost our physics teacher. We have lost our chemistry teacher, the science head of department going on vacation leave, and we are yet to fill his position. Integrated science and biology, it is really concerning he told the Gleaner. So this is coming from a principal at the Brownstone High School um, there in St. Anne. Of course, you know, Fable Williams is suggesting that there is a slower rate, but he has nine teachers leaving from one school. And these are the teachers that he can account for at the moment, perhaps next week and maybe in October. And as the year progresses, more teachers will leave. Right. So it's very important for us to understand that the teachers leave throughout the academic year. 
Tom, Thomas further outlined that he was trying to fill the space left by six teacher resignations, two teachers who have gone on leave, and one teacher who has moved on to another job. So sometimes it's not just about migrating. Sometimes they're on leave or they're moving on to other, you know, other um, opportunities that might be available. The subject areas affected also include mathematics, auto mechanics, English language and English literature, physical education, and industrial arts. All right, so he has these teachers to fill. So far, he says he has only been able to recruit an agricultural science teacher and is in the process of filling an English language and English literature position. Thomas said he was also seeking to engage a Cuban teacher to teach chemistry at the two shift school. So they still operate by shift system, which I thought that that had already been, you know, eliminated. But apparently Brownstone High School still operates on a shift based system. Now, this is a problem, right? This is a crisis. And this is not only one school that we're talking about. We're talking about many schools across Jamaica are suffering from teacher shortages. And teachers are leaving because the environment is not the best in the Jamaican educational system. And their salaries, as the young miss suggested, touted on her TikTok, is, you know, leaves much more to be desired and is not pragmatic, is not a pragmatic salary in which teachers can survive. They can't survive on the salaries that they're earning. They can't take care of their families. They can't make investments. They can't save, right? It is just from hand to mouth. Now, I understand that Dr. Nigel Clark had, you know, increased purportedly the salaries of the teachers, but we understand that it seems like it's not reaching the rank and file members. Maybe it has more to do with the administrators and less to do with the rank and file educators. And they are still unhappy with the job. Now, my understanding is that Dr. Nigel Clark is also leaving 45 billion, a 45 billion shortage in the budget. Right? That means, therefore, that all of the things that he has itemized in the budget, the budget is running in, at a short, you know, it, it, it's it's doesn't have enough money to take care of business, right? That it is short of forty five billion dollars, and he's leaving. And I think I can recall lucidly that people were asking him all of that those salary increases that you actually were suggesting at the time. How are you going to support that? How are you going to pay that? And he brought his chart and he spoke arrogantly about how he was going to be able to, to, to do it. And, you know, when Dr. Nigel Clark speaks, he does not speak with any, you know, real understanding of what the reality is. He tends to speak as if he is speaking to, you know, a textbook. And he's just, you know, telling us about what GDP is and, you know, and it has nothing to do with reality because Dr. Dr. Clark actually functions in a delusional world. And, you know, if you're going to work at the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, you have to function in that world, right? You have to function in that delusional world of Dr. Clark. And that is the world he's, he's functioning in. And that is why he was not able to give any, you know, pragmatic, understanding of how he would have been able to realize the salary increases that he actually purported to have, you know, suggested, to have recommended. So that is something that we have to think about. But now we have teacher shortages again. The teachers are unhappy and they are either leaving or they're moving to greener pastures, right, as it were. So that is what is happening. And we see here in the Jamaican Observer where ministry figures show exodus of teachers slowing. So we hear now, you know, and this is the voice of the GLP, the, GL, the Jamaican Observer. So they are trying to support the government and their nonsense, right? So they are suggesting here that the exodus of teachers you know, um, is actually is slowing. 
it's not as bad as it was last year, but you know, people like Damon Crawford it, are suggesting otherwise that what Fable Williams is suggesting is saying is not true. And here we have the exodus of teachers from Jamaica it seems to be slowing with the Minister of Education and Youth reporting on Wednesday that just more than 100 fewer public school teachers have resigned this year. Is that so? Remember, we have nine teachers resigning from the Brownstone High School, and that figure is just what he has at the moment, you know, at hand. Perhaps other teachers will resign as the year progresses. Portfolio Minister Fable Williams, who revealed this dwindling figure at a post-cabinet press briefing, had last year reported that a total of 854 teachers had resigned between January and September 2023, which represented a 44% reduction when compared to a similar period in 2022. So they're always talking about percentage reduction, right? But what does that have to do with teachers leaving and the fact that, you know, principals are trying now to, you know, find ways of replacing the teachers who have left them, who have resigned. Based on the numbers that have been collated for this year, and she continues to speak, and we are looking at September to August of 2023-2024 versus 2022-2023, the most current information that we have is that a total of 102 fewer teachers resigned this year than last year, Williams said on Wednesday in response to media queries. So that's what she's saying, but she's not the principal or the principals who have to deal with the shortages of the teachers. So she can say what she wants to say, right? And I think that she has not yet according to what I read, um, replaced these teachers with foreign teachers. In the meantime, the education minister again addressed the speculation of more foreign teachers filling local vacancies, insisting that there has been no additional recruitment of overseas educators outside the normal cadre of Cuban teachers this year. She said that while there have been talks surrounding foreign recruitment, nothing has been solidified. To date, we only have our usual cadre of Cuban teachers and others that were in the system before. There has not been any new recruitment of teachers from other countries. There have been talks, there have been discussions, but our, our system continues now as we speak today to have the same countries that we've always had, right? So let us see what, so you have the same teachers, but they're not filling all the vacancies that the principals desire to be filled. So I'm not sure what she's saying here, right? And I think that Fable Williams, I understand through grapevine sources that she might be one of the persons that are short, who is being short, shortlisted um, for the replacement of Dr. Clark. So she might be heading to the Ministry of Finance very shortly. And she has not performed so well in the educational ministry. So, you know, but I guess you don't have to perform well in Jamaica because she's going to be following the dictates of the International Monetary Fund. Anybody who replaces Dr. Clark is going to do the same thing. They're just going to follow the orders that come from Washington, D.C., from the International Monetary Fund. So there is nothing much that she will perhaps be doing in that ministry. But I just wanted to alert you to the crisis in the educational system because of the fact that our Jamaican educators, our leaders, the Minister of, Edu the Minister of Education, and also the, I would say, I would have to sometimes blame the, the, the boards, the school boards and the principals for not alerting the nation to the problem in our schools and that we can't just wait on government, we have to sound the alarm. So I'm calling out on the principals and the school boards to sound the alarm and to debunk any lies that are told by the government. If you stand united, if the principals stand united, they will be able to put up a barricade, a wall against any government attack, right? So that is what we need to do. So. United we stand, divided we fall. So the principals need to come together and they need to sound the alarm along with the school boards that something is wrong with the Jamaican educational system. 
it is in a crisis and it's time for us to come together to see how much we can solve those problems. And obviously, if teachers leaving every year, it's going to impact the educational system in terms of the results. And we are already hearing, we're already hearing that the CHC results, particularly in math and English, were disastrous this year. And this has been an ongoing matter. This is not something new. We have been hearing that since Deborah was a boy. Right? So what are we going to do about it? Is it that we just like to talk about statistics and, you know, and people just like to talk and to chatter? And we don't like to solve the problems? What are the solutions to solving the poor results in math and English that we see every year? And this has been happening for decades now. This is not just happening for a year or a decade, decades, decades, at least since 1990s. I think there have been chatters about that. Right? So what are the solutions? And obviously, if our teachers are leaving and the best of the best are leaving to go abroad, it will only get worse. And the crisis will become a disaster. All right? So that's what we're, we're heading for now, a disaster as far or as our educational system is concerned. Thank you so much for joining. I hope that you like and you'll share and subscribe. Looking forward to seeing you in another video. All the best to you. Bye.